Hey guys. Alright. Uh, did most of the PvE talking in the last video. I'm going to be talking about the PvP pieces in this, uh, this video. Um, what are the best characters for PvP? Um, how would I break them into tiers? Alright, I'm going to just do a quick uh, run through. Try and just keep... Uh, Keep track on on paper here. <laughs> um, uh, Chenny, tier one, for sure. I'm, I'm gonna just I'll do the explanations later, uh, mostly for the tier one characters because there's not much to say about characters that are all not good. They're just there's not much to say. If there was something good to say about them, you would say it, but there isn't. So that's just I'm gonna skip through it. So uh, tier one, uh, Chenny, Serendi, Kai. Uh, Bearman, I'm actually going to be putting in tier two, uh, to be honest. Um, though he's amazing while you're using him, he's not good for defending. Uh, so tier two is going to be Bearman. Uh, Moo is going to be in tier two also. Uh, Deb is going to be like she's she's not at the top of tier two, but she's there for sure. Okay, uh, Carrot is going to be Tier 2. Uh, Tau is going to be Tier 3. Uh, because she's... Like, she's an amazing hero, just not a PvP. It's just... is what it is. Uh, Jack is going to be in Tier 1. Um, mostly because you can just use sets to get the aggro on him. Uh, also, he's good as a defender with his his percentage damage and his sustainability. Um, uh, Lee is going to be tier one for sure, like no doubt about that. Uh, Momo is going to be tier two. Uh, I'm actually thinking about putting him in tier three uh, to be honest, but we're going to put him in tier two uh, just because. Uh, Chris is going to be tier three. Um, Moss is going to be tier four. Uh, Jenny is going to be two. Uh, I'll actually do an explanation for Jenny. Um, just because she's she's just on the cusp. It's just she's she's very um, impractical. Nirvana is going to be tier four. Okay, Persona is going to be tier four. Soraka is tier three. Uh, Lena is tier two. Uh, Jin is tier three. Uh, Alfred is tier three also. Um, uh, Nox is tier two. Uh, Sonic is tier three. Uh, Angela is tier one. Ian is tier uh, tier four, to be honest. Angela, tier one. All right. Okay. Uh, Frul is going to be tier one. Um, because we're only thinking PvP here. Only PvP. Nothing to do with PvE. Um, Electra is going to be tier four. I hope nobody thinks she should be in tier three. She's just not playable. Uh, Lance is going to be in tier four also. Um, I'm thinking maybe tier three is a better spot for him because there are different ways you can build them nicely and his skills do bring some utility. Um, you know, we'll actually put him in tier three. Yeah, let's put uh, Lance in tier three. Uh, Henry is tier three. Uh, he could be higher if he was more practical. If his, if his attack uh, effect bonuses compounded and kept building, uh, he could get a higher ranking here, but uh, it's just for that specific attack that he gets the bonus. Uh, Lily is tier two. I wanna, I wanna say tier two, uh, to be honest. She's just, her attack's just too strong. Um, and you can come, well, you know what? She's tier two in combination um, because she's not gonna be tier two by herself. All right, so let's put her in tier three, actually. Uh, Dominique is tier two. Uh, <laughs> Dolores is tier four. 
greatest tier in the game. Uh, Cleo is tier two. Uh, Jillen is tier three, not tier two. I might do an explanation on that. A uh, kitty is tier four. Poor kitty. Still my favorite character. Uh, Moa is tier three. Uh, Pony is tier three. Uh, Raboff is uh, also tier three. Uh, Lilith is tier three. Uh, Sion is uh, tier four. Uh, Unknown is tier two. Okay. Uh, Azriel is tier two. Uh, Shark is tier four. No question there. Uh, Klein is tier one. Moang is tier three. Uh, Lancer Alex is tier two. Uh, Bell is tier four, obviously, like any other hero. Uh, Shushu is actually Shushu might be tier three. Uh, not not four. Her uh, her skills are the most practical to be used in the PvP team for a healer. Uh, Zero is tier two. Uh, Rage is tier one, uh, but he should actually have his own tier between tier one and tier two, to be honest. And uh, Hella is. Uh, like, you don't need that kind of support for PvP, so she is definitely a tier 4. Alright, pretty sure that's everything. So, four tier 1 heroes. The list I put together is Chenny, Serendi, Kai, Jack, Lee, Angela, Thrull, Klein, and Rage. Those are your strongest heroes in the game. All right, so let's uh, let's talk about why these characters are the tier 1 heroes. Now, there's something that all of them uh, have in common. Um... And that's amazing stats and game-breaking mechanics. Now, there's a reason that they all have a game-breaking mechanic, and we'll get into all of that. We'll talk about what each one's game-breaking mechanic is, uh, and why it puts them in Tier 1. And it's obviously relating to damage. First off, Chenny, Kai, Jack, Lee, all have armor ignore. So does Rage, but his is situational, which is why I think that he belongs somewhere in the middle of Tier 1 and Tier 2. Uh, but I think Rage makes up for it with the fact that he's got probably the most useful PvE combination of skills compared to all the other tier 1 heroes. So he kind of... like Rage is probably one of the best attack type uh, PvE heroes in the game, if not the best. Um, he's probably straight up number 1 for what he does. Because um, all of his skills are great against NPCs. All of them. Uh, but He's, uh, he's got a situational one, but it still exists. Now, what's nice about Rage is the best tank in the game right now, I actually believe, is Bear Man, if you are the one playing. Because if you're the one playing, then aggro works. Uh, if you're defending, it doesn't, which is why Jack gets tier 1 over, over Bear Man. Because you can build Kai, uh, sorry, you can build Jack in a tanky uh, aggro bunch of sets to give him the same effect that Bear Man would have. He wouldn't be as tanky, but he could probably be tanky enough to take an attack or two from uh, most characters in the game uh, with the overpowered gear sets we got going around, different potentials. Like, there's definitely going to be a way. Uh, the game is versus, like, uh, sorry, a widespread enough now that there's a huge range of people in different levels. Like, it's prob it's possible to make Jack into a character that just never dies, depending on someone's team. Their team might not be able to kill a Jack. That's really, really stacked because he sustains too much. It is possible to do that for somebody who's independently wealthy. Not for most everybody, but we're talking about the best of the best situations here. Um, but uh, if you're the one playing, Bear Man is a better tank because he can take more damage. He's got higher... I get attacked. That's my job skills. Um, Jack is more of a hope he can take all the attacks, stay alive, and then be a damage dealer at the same time. So uh, it's it's pretty close because Bear Man actually just can't do anything defense-wise uh, for your team most of the time. 
Uh, he is probably not fit to be tier one, uh, but as the player being in control, he is the tankiest tank that you can have. Uh, he has the highest aggro, and uh, the most important thing uh, is that you're not going to be really bringing the pain with your fourth slot tank. So, like it, again, positioning is the most important thing. This is going to go into your slot four. So, for what your slot four hero does, Bearman is better in control. But in defense, uh, Jack Jack beats. Jack is uh, not as good while you're playing with him. Um, in terms of the tank role, but if you can be surviving with your Jack uh, and not getting them completely just crushed, then it's a different story. So, like, there's a different give or take arguments for both sides of that. Um, but Bearman, uh, Bearman is kind of does his job a little bit better. It's just he doesn't do two jobs. Jack does two jobs. Anyway, I'm moving on with that. Um, forget exactly what I was talking about. Uh, but, sorry, but Rage. Um, has the advantage against Bearman being a rock with his ability to smash down scissors. Now, most people are using a slot one scissor or a slot one paper. Like by a pretty uh, large margin, it's it's all scissors and papers. Scissors is the most popular, paper is the next most popular, which means the best tank that you can have is probably a scissor uh, tank. Um, if it was, uh, like, you could go all against the scissor types and make Jack a really good tank, but then he gets completely hard countered by all the people playing, for example, Lamian's playing Angela right now. So, it, it completely 360 is on him right there where he's going to get one shot every single time. Which isn't cool. So, I think Bearman would be a more reliable tank in that sense, but uh, everybody's got their own different way to play things. Uh, I did decide on Bearman to be in Tier 2, though, so that's just the way that it's going to be. Um... But all these characters uh, in Tier 1 have this game-breaking mechanic. So it was the Armor Ignore for all the first ones I mentioned. Now, with Fruel, with Fruel and uh, Lee, uh, Lee not only has Armor Ignore, but he also has a skill that gives him 32.25 more crit damage. Fruel's passive just naturally gives him 20% more to his, his crits. So he breaks the game damage numbers like that, uh, where Lee has to use the second skill, but he still has it. Um, uh, Serendi doesn't have any damage breaking skills, but she is proven time and time again that her utility is uncomparable to anything else in the game. Serendi is so useful in too many situations, way too many situations. It's, it's not fair to not put Serendi on the tier one list because she is just so good at absolutely everything. And we really don't have time to go into it because I got plans tonight, so... <laughs> We're going to leave that the way it is. Um, who else do we have on there? Angela and Klein. All right, so Angela and Klein, they break the game in different ways. Uh, Angela and Klein, one, have two of the highest sets of base stats of any character in the game. Huge mana pools, huge attack, huge HP. They suffer movement-wise, but they have crazy area skills. And they both have... Now, I don't know how this, how this scales, uh, but it's going to be very easy... Uh, for maybe Klein and to, to combine what like he doesn't need to actually use his own movement reduction skill Though it could be awesome to have Klein in slot 3 Could be really awesome to have Klein in slot 3 because then you can use a skill like this I did the same thing that I do with my Kai in my slot 3 Kai uh, and then instead you can hit people that stay out of, uh, like, characters that don't rush up and attack your tank right in the face, like, right from a tile beside it. Um, Klein can hit those characters, which is going to be really cool. You get, like, a like a Pathfinder set on him, and he's fine. Uh, just with the form movement, he's fine. You want to go Ghost Step, that's cool, but I, I would recommend a Pathfinder to get the extra HP, because you could turn this guy into, like, 100. I got I got 106,000 health on my Kai right now. I'm confident that I can make a client that has 120,000 with just the Pathfinder set. Easily. Easily 120,000. Probably more. Uh, he's got really, really broken skills. Like, they all do a ton of damage. Uh, and he does have the Berserk passive, which makes him kind of ideal for a th third slot in a lot of maps. Uh, well, specifically the bridge map where he's going to get attacked. Because uh, he's going to be way too tanky for anybody to one-shot. Um, most uh, characters are rock in the mid lanes right now. 
Uh, I think Rock has is, is got a pretty tight hold on the usefulness for the mid lane slot characters, uh, but Klein's going to crush that. Um, I also think Angela kind of does the same thing. Um, because she she has, again, very, 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 very... I actually have Angela, so we're going to look at her actual base stats. Not my Rebirth uh, version. Uh, but she's got, t again, huge mana, huge attack, tons of health, uh, great, great, great base defense. Uh, and her crit rate and hit rate are actually both over... Uh, can you scroll down with this? No, it doesn't show hit rate. Uh, but her base hit rate is also uh, 1058. Uh, her crit rate and hit rate. So, like, she's got... Like, her stats all the way across the board are pretty OP. Now, I know in the story it says she sucked up all the life from <laughs> uh, all the uh, beast rain experiments, and it, uh, it clearly shows here. Uh, but Klein is like the genius, the greatest genius of all time in terms of practical magic. So that makes sense for him too in this universe. But they are both amazing characters. Now what's also really nice about them, which is going to often go overlooked by a lot of people, is both Klein and Angela have a broken as hell amount of base mastery. 8600 and 8400, which means they're going to be one pendant uh, users. They're only going to need one pendant. Uh, and then they can have uh, brooches or or uh, rings to give them better stats all around. It's going to help with their consistency and their maximizing of their damage. Uh, or their tankiness, depending on how you want to build them. Um, brooches are technically the best because they, they also give you attack with your attack by HP potentials. So, like, the, it's arguably, like, you would get better... Uh, if, you just, if crits were not a huge factor, then the most amount of stats you can get would be from brooches and not from rings or pendants. Uh, the highest attack would be from pe uh, necklaces, sorry, not pendants. Um, uh, brooches would give you the best overall stats, and rings obviously the best hit and crit rate. So, uh, you're going to have to have a good balance. I like to have as little pen, uh, necklaces as possible just to max out or get my mastery in the 95 plus percent range. Uh, and then I like to have uh, rings. Uh, and if my set pieces, my set items have brooches, then it's brooches. That's that's how I do things. Um, uh, but uh, Klein's skills, I it's, it's hard for me to say right now, but as a third slot hero, he is going to be able to activate his Berserk passive almost all the time uh, like you're it's gonna be easy for him to get attacked it's gonna be easy for him to trigger this uh, and when you have such a extremely tanky hero that really brings the pain with a passive like this it's gonna be ignored a lot now I was thinking he was not a good passive to have at first myself uh, and I've completely changed my mind on that uh, I, I thought a, a long a hard about it and I, I just decided you know what for the way I would play Klein in PvP, I would activate my passive every single fight. Every single... I would find a way to do it. Uh, I would either one-shot their whole team, or I would survive and then do it next turn. Like, that is that is the, the build with Klein. Now, what's also nice about Klein is with this skill in the third slot, on the bridge map, he will be able to get pimped out hits off on the other team. Uh... The other person's second uh, slot hero is going to come to you. If they can't come right up into your face, Klein will actually be able to hit the third slot hero on their team at the same time. Uh, and you can make a, a formation or, or, or something like that where you're going to have your character walk right up and be in their face or position them in a way where they're, if they do go first, that your second slot hero can kind of block them off in the way so they'll come up and stand exactly in Klein's hitbox range. There's going to be a lot of cool things that you can do with him. Um, with being able to do this. the same things that you can do with Jenny, but Jenny, she's not practical to use in this way because she would just die in one shot. So it's it's kind of unfortunate for her. Um, Angela, uh, that's enough for Klein. We'll, we'll talk more about him when he comes out, but I'm, I'm going to put the assumption on tier one for now. Angela, on the other hand, Angela's skills, all right, first off, her passive immediately breaks the game because now she's getting a huge amount more attack and defense. Uh, for the paper characters. Uh, now, she does need a second paper character, which is a little bit unfortunate, so I think she will be a lot stronger with the addition of Klein in the future. Slot 1 Angela, slot 3 Klein. 
um, slot two Serendi and let's say slot four Jack just for because uh, I think that would be an amazing team uh, going into the future. Um, let's level some of these things up. Uh, but look at the skill level one. All right, so it's gaining what is it six point five? What is that? So that's six point six, right? Yeah, six point six percent per level. Six point six percent per level. So. Let's consider Cheney right now. She's pro like second strongest hero in the game. Her skill modifier is 199%. The skill modifier on this uh, at max level, I believe is around 230%. Let's just do the math real quick right now. I don't want to have some misinformation going on in the video. All right, so right now I'm at level three, 173.2 uh, plus 6.6. .6 times what, uh, times seven? Error one, okay, this, this doesn't do math like my, my phone calculator. <laughs> it does actual math. All right, so times seven. All right, 46.2% plus one. All right, so it's not as strong as I thought. 46.2 um, from the 173. as a 200, whatever, let's, let's just call it 210%, um, unless I'm off by a decimal, no, I'm off by 10 there, aren't I? Yeah, it's 200, it's almost 220%. Uh, so it, with 20% more, that's like having um, rules passive applied to all your skills. Not, not exactly, the numbers don't exactly work out like that, but uh, it's pretty close. Uh, and she gets it on her skills before they're crit. Uh, because it's this like we're doing these all multiplication by percentage based things uh, and that's another 20 percent too in a already in the situation modifier and that works all the time so her skill just without having a crit basically does as much damage as frul would uh uh in terms of extra damage from his crit it's the same thing because her skill scales so high now as a downside it does hit your team so be prepared if you're going to be using Angela, especially in a slot three, for example, instead of a slot one, you're going to be killing your tank <laughs> when you do that. Uh, but she she's more ideal for a suited for a slot one hero, uh, which gets rid of all your problems. Just going to have to get yourself a ghost step for it, that's all. Um, or a Pathfinder if you just want to be a super tanky hero person. Uh, but she can break the numbers with her skill her passive and her third skill give her huge amounts so just and because she already is an 8000 base attack hero she kind of breaks the limits of what most heroes in the game are reasonably able to do and she does it without having to use any kind of criticals or anything like that to do it she just straight up has the damage it's just there it's always there it's consistent it's reliable it doesn't need to be based on critical or anything else like that the only downside is her need to have a second paper hero and i don't think that there is another paper hero that really fits in slot one right now i'm looking right now other than klein rock scissors uh scissors rock 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 scissors so there's just nobody else uh but she's uh, basically the only other person that can break the game's numbers like that um now, going into Tier 2, the reason the characters that are in Tier 2 are in Tier 2, I will not be giving explanations for Tier 3 heroes. Uh, the Tier 2 characters, Bearman, like I said, he just is not good on defense. Uh, he can't defend. Um, he's only got 4 movement, and he's easy to walk around, and just not, like, you don't have to deal... When you have Bearman on defense, and I'm speaking from experience here, it's like, I have Bearman on my defense, because I don't mind if people beat me when I'm defending. Sometimes three of my heroes is enough to take on four of your heroes. It's just, it's the way it is. I got some really strong stuff. Um, but uh, Bear Man is, he's got to be the easiest character in the world to play around. He's a one-to-one -one melee hero, one space range, and he's got four movement. So just that alone kind of takes out his usefulness all the way around. It'd be really easy for you to just walk away from him and then kill everything else, then position yourself nicely around him later where you can quadruple team him. Um, 
or some or whatever however people deal with it there's there's people who can just one shot my bear man because they've got strong enough stuff uh moo is tier two uh, because she just has amazing utility now her ability to get insane amounts of crit makes it really nice for her to have a lot of crit damage but she doesn't have anything game breaking about her her 100 percent stun is like if there wasn't a such thing as stun immunity she would definitely be in tier one for sure um, now she doesn't have any kind of game breaking damage thing. Just Moo is like a jack of all trades character that does everything really well, but doesn't do anything mind blowingly amazing. Moo is only really broken if your whole team is already dead, which is not a good thing. So if your whole team's dead, Moo might shine in very, very well if she's got her crit up. Now she goes down and she gets 100% crit with the extra couple thousand attack that she gets from all your dead party members and things like that like she could she has potential it's just she doesn't have reliable game breaking mechanics that surround her uh, deb's the same thing deb can be built really strong she's a very good all-around character but nothing about her really breaks the game uh, in a way that can one shot a 60 percent defense tank there's just nothing there a uh, carrot brings a lot of utility carrots a huge hitter uh, and she's good against uh, weaker rock characters that don't have so much tankiness like Kai and Serendi uh, but that's really all she's great against uh, because in PvP she's not going to be using her utility to take away your crit rate and, and your defense uh, and whatever like she's more known for her nuking unless you know spe specifically a situation where you can use her utility wise she's not that useful uh, and she's too squishy and she gets killed easily she's easy to build and because she is a 7200 base attack hero she can actually just do that one shot build but she's not as consistent uh, as uh, some of the other characters especially because of her high mana cost on her third skill she's not likely to get multiple fires off all the time well, like she can't fire that skill three times in, in pvp it's not going to happen um Let's see, who else we got? Uh, Momo is basically Carrot uh, with zero utility and higher damage. Um, now, his third skill is semi-game breaking uh, because it does get into the 200% uh, range also. Uh, let's see, uh, 6, 12, 8... Yeah, it's, uh, it's the exact same uh, power as uh, Angela's. And look at that hitbox. Isn't that amazing? Uh, that's great, uh, but... That's all he really has. Uh, maybe if he's going to combine his second skill, he can raise his attack up. But th that's a combination skill thing, where and his passive is brings nothing. Every time one eliminates an enemy, that's that's a maximum of. Anyway, it's it's not a useful. He's not he's not really useful. Like his third skill is strong for a regular hero, but he's not comparable to heroes that can break the mechanics of the game. Um, he almost seems like it with this 220% damage skill, but it's just not good enough to really put him up there. He's got a lot of extra fallbacks, though he is like, he's like the, the carrot that everybody wants carrot to be, where he hits really hard, and he's actually got tankiness to him, uh, for the sacrifice of one movement, which you can compensate for with a ghost step set or something like that. Uh, but he doesn't have any other thing to, like, Angela's got, uh, her skill and her passive, and like nonsensical things that go along with it um and way better stats than momo uh momo is like a not as a good version as An as angela um uh, jenny uh used to think she was on tier one but she just doesn't have the stats to really blow the mind uh she's got an ability to get an extra 50% more crit rate than, sorry, crit damage than every other hero in the game, and she can uh, amplify her crit uh, crit rate. But her third skill's uh, crit rate uh, comes at a mana cost of 176, so she can't go around. She might get two shots with this, and that's all you're really going to have to have. By then, she's either going to be dead after her first shot, or your other paper hero is not going to be alive either. Uh, but it's it's nice that she's got this HP and, and crit damage increase, but it's like it just isn't enough. Uh, to get her into this high or as useful or consistent uh, as the other heroes because she fails at everything else really hard. Um, uh, Lena and Nox uh, are both really high utility heroes. Uh, with uh, like Lena's got the HP percent damage and the weakening. Nox has 8,000 base attack, so I think that their damage is comparable, probably more in favor of Lena. Um, but they're both more utility heroes. They're, they're utility heroes that are really good at PvP. Uh, if you can get the positions to take advantage of their different skills, uh, which is more beneficial for Nox, believe it or not, than Lena, uh, because he can four range his uh, immobilized skill. Uh, but uh, they're they're both 
they're both more specialized at not killing like neither of them are going to be going around one shotting is is the problem uh they again they, they they have all this great utility but they can't really break the game's damage mechanics uh, okay uh, dominique uh would be amazing if it wasn't for the fact that she was reliant on dodge um because she's a, a great hero here she's got pretty damn good base stats oh in terms of uh attack uh now the funny thing is carrot's stronger <laughs> Uh, than Dominique, but Dominique has this overpowered third skill, which I believe also gets up into the 200% range. Oh yeah, for sure. This is probably the strongest skill in the game. Um, oh yeah, this is probably the strongest skill in the game. It co comes at the cost of her HP, uh, but she could probably uh, reach tier 1 level damage with that, just with that by itself. Unfortunately, she is too squishy and dodge is very unreliable. When people just stack hit rate, you, you really can't count on her dodge to be something that's going to save you or, or make her good enough to just take out entire people's tier 1 teams. Okay, uh, Cleo. Uh, Cleo is more of a supportive role um, that has really good utility. Uh, she's not... Uh, uh, she can't be the one who's actually bringing the pain. She's the one helping you out, uh, and and she because she can't bring the pain. She's got all this great utility, uh, with good rates, confusion, and and uh, and charm. She's a good hero, but she's not uh, like there's nothing that breaks her. Like it's cool that she increases everybody's crit rate, which is nice. Um, nice combination with Jenny, but uh, she's not really. If you have to have two characters that make this great combination, that makes the one character really strong. Generally, you could have just had this really strong character instead. So yeah, you got to kind of wrap your head around that idea. Uh, Unknown is really strong and has high stun, um, but I don't think he's as good as Mu in terms of PvP. Just because Mu stun, so long as they don't have immunity, it, because it's both stun here, immunity is going to be the only real thing. Uh, Unknown has better sustain and higher stats uh, attack-wise, uh, but I think Mu is going to be a little bit more consistent because if, if they are stun immune then Moo's got the, the ability to fall back on unlimited crits with very little investment. Uh, Azriel's really strong again um, but he, he really just doesn't have anything. Now I don't know how strong his skills get but there's clearly nothing that gets over the 200% range uh, and he's more of a, a again an attack type hero built with sustainability and you, he's got good movement and all that and whatever but he's just like there's again, there's there's nothing that can really push him over to the next level. Uh, Alex uh, and Zero, Alex and Zero, are uh, are great heroes. Uh, that like the, all this all the numbers, uh, they're they're on paper amazing heroes, um, but they're not am they're not amazing enough. Uh, is is the problem? Um, they are they have better PVE uh, sets than they do for PVP. Um, to be completely honest. Uh, you think Assassin Zero would be the ideal PvP hero because his name is Assassin Zero, but that's just unfortunately not the case for him. Uh, he does have a really good passive, and it's all the time, 70% or higher. That's probably the best increased attack um, by HP skill in the game. He gets a third skill, though, that gets paired with Drain instead of Armor Ignore. That is, that's almost unacceptable. Like, I really think that they should remake uh, uh, Assassin Zero. They should basically give him Rage's stats. Because it doesn't make any sense that a guy with pistols in a fantasy RPG game is stronger than a guy with these badass looking swords. Just look at that. Anyway, uh, I think that uh, Zero uh, belongs in Tier 1. I think they should rework him a little bit. He's got a great mana pool, some good stats. Uh, he's got good base stats for basically everything. You'd think his crit rate would be higher than his hit rate, but you know, Assassin's accuracy is supposed to be everything, right? Uh, but whatever. Let's just say crit rate would be better. Um, maybe pump up his crit rate, crit rate uh, lower his HP, um, uh, and lower his defense, because it doesn't need to be up there either. Uh, raise his dodge if it's going to go for a real assassin-like type character. Uh, give him 7,600 to 8,000 attack. Uh, give him armor ignore, and keep this passive exactly where it is. D do something with these two skills, they're not that great. Maybe if this was immobilized instead of movement. Now, movement by three is basically immobilized for most characters, but and it's a two-turn effect, which is cool. But um, seeing as how he otherwise is a melee hero, <laughs> Uh, well, semi melee hero. He's got good ranges, uh, but uh, like that's not going to be super useful to him. Um, 
assassins don't stick you in one place and then hit you from far away. Assassins come up to you and kill you in one shot. So I really w hope that they rework this hero and I can get him into tier one. I also hope that they change him to paper. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this video. Um, let's see, is there anybody else that might have been good enough to actually get into tier one? It's just not, it's hard to say. Uh, possibly... No, that's it. All right. Uh, that, anyway, that's that's it for uh, the PvP tier list right now. Uh, if somebody wants to compile it, you're more than welcome to and reference this video. Uh, so you don't have to write in the explanations on whatever. Just post the video and put the list up and then have the explanations. Uh, I'm not going to go into tier 3 and tier 4 explanations, though if somebody wants to put a comment down below for why they feel a certain character should be higher rated in a PvP, um, then uh, we can debate it and maybe I'll alter it. All right. Great. Have a good one.